to the fourth episode of the Cranwell Co-op Harmony of History series of podcasts. These podcasts describe lectures and stories of shared history in conversation with community members and guest speakers. This series is supported and funded through the International Fund for Ireland under the Peace Impact Programme. Marcella McGarry and artist Ken Gunning will take you through a series of recorded workshop talks and lectures held in Cranmore and Sligo. This week we are delighted to be in the Masonic Hall on the Mall in Sligo to discover what lies at the top of those steps. We are joined by members of the Masonic Order to explore the history of the Order since the First Lodge was established in Sligo in the 1770s. We discuss topics and questions in an open forum with the members, including what is Freemasonry, why are they a secret society, what do they do at their meetings, and what do they actually stand for. We also look at the relevance of this ancient order within contemporary society, and we hope to find out a secret or two during the talk. So what we're going to do is have a little talk down here, and then we'll go upstairs in the lodge room and see if our thing will back down to have a discussion about what you started, what you said, what you thought at the beginning, what you think now, what you think today. So I'm we'll allowed you can ask all the questions you want and anything, so I'll take all the photographs or whatever. But I'm going to ask you this question. What's your perception of the Islamic order? As we said now. Some sort of a secret society. Right. Yeah. It's a charitable organization. Right. It's after. It's just. Anything else? Come be as frank as. You're doing a lot of fun. But I would say I didn't yeah. charge yeah. yeah. uh, it assisted members in their business, maybe financially. And, uh, so you say buddy-buddy type thing? Well, that's what we yeah. were. Yeah, yeah. Buddy, yeah. Buddy, buddy, buddy. Yeah. Yeah. OK. If there was, uh, if the breadwinner died in the family, they had the case. The case. Yeah. Well, that's charitable as well. So we'll come to anything else? Is it OK? Yeah. Because the square of Compass International Center previously began to get on the door. 
of a secret. But do you, <laughs> but, but, <laughs> do, you have, do you have to be invited in to become a member? Well, they or were can that. you apply? Well, they were that later on. Yeah. Of a secret. Sure, you wouldn't know I was a member. If I was a secret organization. Do you know what I mean? It's, it, that's a perception. Well, there was a certain. Uh, it was accessible to a certain number of people, but I think they must have had to have some friends or something. Because my dad was so, yeah, but you're talking about rich folk and invited. So you're talking about the elite in town, mm. yeah. the business elite, and sort of, yeah. and things like that, and invited yeah. in town. So that's what you're saying there as well. So, right. Anything else? That would be due for Glenelg. Mary said that. Here we get <laughs> <laughs> Hold on, I smuggled weed in and it was bad for your sister and I hold on. It was seaweed. <laughs> uh, right, so Freemasonry in Sligo goes back to 1757. So that's when the first law was established in the town or in the county. At its height, there was 16 lodges within Sligo County, but now there's only two, and both of them sit here. Right. One is called Light of the West, and every lodge has a name and a number, because you're on a list in Grand Park. And Light of, the, Light of the West is number 20, and there's another lodge called Hardick Lodge 165. So the picture down here, so, one of the quick things is that one of these guys, we don't know what one, but one of them went down with the Titanic. Oh, with the Titanic. Oh. So, so he didn't buy the knife out of Bart Smith. So. <laughs> so, as I say, this building here is 1895. It was started by this guy here, Arthur Jackson, on the oil pen. Um, but we reckon it was his wife, Kathleen, or Catherine, Catherine, that really was the driving force because he used to meet in his house. So can you imagine 40 or 30 or 40 blokes coming in once or twice a month? What about you, Mrs. Jackson? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You know, so, so we reckon she was the real driving force. So he thought it was built by uh, Henry C., who was an architect from Belfast, and a George Carr, who was a builder in town. To say, this is the only purpose built Masonic Hall this side of the channel. Every other Masonic Hall this side of the channel is the development of a, of a hall or a room or something. Mm. Is there another one down in Clare? In where? County Clare. Purpose Yeah, but that's the this, this side of the channel. That's the other bit. What time is so, and as we said, it goes back, we here, they say there's six lodges in this district. This district is North Connacht, so it takes in Mayo, Leitrim, and Sligo. And we have six lodges, two that sit here, one in Bow Hill, one in Manor Hammond, one in Boy, and one in Ballinat. So there's about 220 members in this district, in all of the things. Grand Lodge sits in Dublin, that's our, we're governed by the Grand Lodge of Ireland. They sit in Dublin in Moser Street, so Bushels Hotel, mm -hmm. you stand in front of Bushels, across the road. Is there a lodge like this in Manor Hamilton? Not a building like this, no. There is a, there is a, there is a Masonic Lodge, Yeah. but there's not a building like this. It's okay. a wee sort of small no. building okay. that has been redeveloped. It was, a, it was a hall or something that sort of repurposed. Really Okay. This is what we're saying about a purpose-built hall. Mm. Um, the Grand Lodge of Ireland started in 1720s, and the lodges in Sligo started in the 1750s. But there is evidence that Freemasonry started in Ireland in the 1500s because there's Thoman Bridge in Limerick, used to be called Balls Bridge. Mm. And when it redeveloped in the 1800s, I found this little tomb, and it said on it, We strive to live on the level and 
part of the square, which is a Masonic set. We have a replica yeah. upstairs, which we'll show you. Take out, show you. And so the history goes back to the 1500s, right? So we're the oldest grand, we're the oldest continually grand lodge in the world. So Ireland is the oldest Masonic order in the world. Um, we have a whole lot of history. Well, here's the thing connects you to Sligo and Freemasonry in history. Ambrose O'Higgins, so the O'Higgins, the Bernardo and Ambrose, yeah. the wee plaques down in the Stephen Street car park. Mm -hmm. Well, the son Ambrose, is it Ambrose the son or Bernardo? Bernardo was the son, Bernardo. He was a Freemason. And he joined the lodge. He was sent to London by his father to study art and this and everything else. He met a guy called Simon Bolivar in the lodge. And Simon Bolivar is the daddy of O'Connell of South America. He's the what's called the Great Liberation. Bolivia is named after him. So yeah. that little sort of man. The other ten, there's a we have a colleague who's researching this at the minute, he's actually written a book about it. Um, General Humber, who was a French general that invaded at Kalala mm -hmm. in, in the Statue of Garden. He was a Freemason. And it was a meeting that the British and the French had. Unbelievable, it was a, they were both Freemasons, and they had a talk, a Masonic talk, and that's where it stopped. So there's a bit, but there are more to come in that in the next year, 18 months, there's going to be a book about it, about the history of that. And the guy actually has the same thing as a knighthood in France, he was given the citizenship. He was given a medal, and it's only about three or four Irish people have ever had this. So he's writing a book about it, so he's well in the building. Um, <coughs> what are all the things in the slide? Uh, yeah, we talk about, talk about history and things like that. There's three streets in Sligo that's named after Freemasons. Can you name them? No. Hamster Street. Hamster Street. Hamster Street. Burton Street. Hamster Street. O'Connell. After Daniel O'Connell. Daniel O'Connell was the secretary of the Grand Lodge of Ireland. So Daniel O'Connell actually wrote the organization for about the 15th century. What else? Right. That's for right. Edward Street, no? No. Conjure Street? Mm -hmm. No. Street. Yeah. Marcus Street? Marcus Street? Marcus Street? Marcus Street? No. Charles Street? Wolf Tongue. Wolf Tongue. Oh, of course. Wolf Tongue. 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 Wolf so we have Pernell Square, Pernell Street, and all mm -hmm. this mm -hmm. double. So every town in Ireland has at least two streets in that previous. One respect, and one stage, uh, the Pope banned Catholics from being free members of Catholic societies. So all of the Freemasons who were uh, Catholic had to leave, including Daniel O'Connell, and. The Freemasons lost 80% of their members. At that point. At that so 80% point. were Catholic. 80%. Yeah. Back in the day. Back, back in, in the day. day. Uh, in, uh, just after Vatican II, the Pope rescinded that yeah. because he found that the Masonic Order wasn't a secret society. And we weren't conspiring against the Catholic Church. Catholics weren't. weren't. And Catholics were then allowed to rejoin. And but Catholics have always been in the Order. Because there's a Grand Lodge of Spain, a Grand Lodge of Italy, a Grand Lodge of France, a Grand Lodge of Portugal. Did it all start in Ireland, the Masonry? Well, we'll come down a bit. Right. But there's arguments about that. Okay. So, what we've done, we've said uh, secret society, Protestants, we've done that one. Rich folk. Rich folk. Well, probably back in the day, yes. Mm. But now, definitely. My Lodge, which is Hardwick 165, we have our youngest members 21, 22, 22, and our oldest members 92, 90. and we have everything from the Kyries to 
doctors to accountants to shopkeepers to tradesmen to builders to electricians, butchers, students in the public. How does it appeal to young people now? When I say young people, say people under 30 or under 35, um, do many of them join or become members? Does, well, it, does, it, does it generate interest? I think what it is when we have culture night on top of nights like this and young people come up, they actually, a lot of young people are quite lost. Do you know what I mean? They're sitting on their phones and don't communicate, mm -hmm. where if you come into something like this, and there's a bit of communication, it's better practice, better social, social work. There's a structure. And it's structured, and there's a sort of, there is a structure quite formal at times. So, some of them do, but some of them come because they've read Dan Brown and think we have all the secrets still to be in. And they come in, and they get really disappointed. You know, because I was saying to Marcel, you know, one of the great things is everybody thinks that we rule the world. You know, we're the other man. Yeah. We, yeah. we have had a meeting. My lodge has had a meeting every Thursday for 125 years. And we can't still start. Can't. Now, 125 years, eight meetings a year, we still can't get organized. So how we can't do that after 125 years, we're going to rule the world. Do you know what I mean? But somebody says that's when you need women. But that's the not go there. <laughs> so, well, the same for men only, right? I'm going to put this bloody for you guys. You better be very careful. Very careful. Very that's careful. That's how I'm going to put it. I'm going to say, I'm going to take it on one side. And excuse me, gentlemen, for being advising in this. Men are really crap at socialising, unless they have a focal point. Right. So you tell them, God, golf, cars, whatever. Oh, we're crap at socialising. We're women getting a million in right? Mm -hmm. So, men need something to focus on. It's, it's one of them. Um, we, so, to answer the thing about a men and thing, I'm going to, you get me a rep, you get me an application from for the ICA. Same thing. So there's positive discrimination on both sides, right? Now in saying that, there is a female or feminine mass in the Sun Quarter. That's where by. That was started in 1903, and some of those members became fairly high, or fairly powerful, not powerful, fairly active suffragettes. When my husband worked on the buses in England in the 60s, and his conductor, she was a Freemason. So there you go. And I used to ask him, what is it? He couldn't tell me nothing. She wouldn't tell him no. Yeah. So there is a, so there's a female Masonic order. It's nothing to do with us. It's two separate organisations. Now, so you still keep the women out. Yeah. They keep us out. So put that. Take the other side because the Grand Master had put a letter in to one of the papers and said, "Would you just leave us alone? We really don't want to be associated with the masculine order. We're quite happy by ourselves. Just leave us be." And the Grand Lodge of England, Scotland, and Ireland are all separate organisations. Recognise the female order. So much so that they're allowed to sit in the lodge in New North, because there's two female lodges that sit in New North. In and they sit within the Masonic Hall. But <coughs> in England, they sit in the Masonic Halls as well. But they're still two totally separate organisations. There is also an order called the Human Wat, which allowed men and women to sit together. And there's one lodge that sits in Dublin. So are they, women, are they part of the, of the... They're not part of the Grand Lodge of Ireland. Right. No. Is it much the, the same as the Rotary? We have a female version that's soft, that begins with an S. Well, see, there's a rotary in the lands and things like that. They're all men, but they never get to for either. You know? You see my heart bleeding? But do the, do the, the women's organisation of the... Exactly the same. But do they, at some level, interact 
with the no. men's house, no interaction. No. Not officially. They sort of they meet and they recognise each other, but yeah. not officially. They wouldn't just. Well, why though? Why? Why? Do I don't know. That's that's where that's where the, that's where the woman, that's above my wage. What is wage speech? What's it about? Bro, we'll come to that in a second. That's it, sold them with it. That's probably that's probably the reason why it's coming to Yeah. It's a bit like that. And you know, some of our wives and partners are going, yeah. Go and have your boys night out. You know what I mean? Like, my better half is literally looking for more application forms for me to join more Yeah, you know what I mean? So, um, but no, it, it's, it's one. So, masonry, right? What's masonry? Well, where did it start? People say it started back <coughs> as far back as the Great Pyramids of Egypt and stone hands, but there's nothing to do about it. Where it actually started, where is the acceptable start, is the stonemasons that built the cathedrals and the castles of Europe in the medieval. And what they had to do was, you done your time on site, you became, you went in as an apprentice, you became a fellow craft, you next way up, you became a master mason. So, how, so if the cathedral in Slido was built, or the, the, the Abbey and Boyd was finished. And Jesus had built the cathedral in Slido. We'll take them straight up there. They couldn't send email or CV or something, couldn't write and say, you know, Jimmy Joe, great Mason, get him the gig. And for the foreman to give you the work to test you, he had to give you a block of stone. And you had to sit there for six, seven, eight, nine, week, ten, or whatever it was and carve out something to prove your skill. So how did they know that they were all at the level they were at back then? The handshake was true. The handshake was The handshake was a secret word. The secret what? Secret word, a password. Oh. And that's the only secrets that we have in the free mission today, is those grips. And the, uh, the grips are the handshakes and the passwords. And those three levels that they had in the apprentice, Fellow craft and master masons of three degrees. But are, are the principles still the same as when it was founded? Is there a set of sort of guidelines? Well, we'll, we'll come to that as well, yeah. yeah. So, it went on and on at all these, and the guys used to meet at the e twos on the site, and they were called lodges, so that's where you get to the lodge. So, to give you an idea, this building is not the lodge. This is in the song called. The body of men that we hear are the lodge. Right. So as time progressed, these were getting things. So the building was getting less and less. And they were getting all these guys coming together. And then more non-masons, non stone masons started coming in. So it started developing a sort of like a social club. We used to meet in cafes and things like that. And then that's where this whole secrecy thing came in, because we are having men of different classes, get different trades, different demographics, I would say, more than anything, all meeting in cafes behind a closed door. And that's where the whole secrecy and all the conspiracy theories come in, because well, why is all these different men meeting and talking and doing all that? That's where the government's got their paranoia yeah. in from. So that's where the whole... And then you have to become, not semi secret, but you know, you have a sort of thing. So then it became more and more, and that's where you have the Grand Lodge, it became more formal. And then the basis of masonry <coughs> is, and this is old English, and I get these, these sayings, it's brotherly love, belief, and truth. Sorry, Brother, say that again. Brotherly love, so yeah. appreciation of your fellow man or citizen. Relief, charity, and truth being truthful. So that's the key principle. So you, we have to, as you go through those degrees of Freemasonry, you're taught different moral lessons. 
and we'll explain more about those more or less in the more start because it's a lot easier. But the three creative principles are belief, truth, and brotherhood. And I'm going to ask a question now because I'll I, I, I ask the question first and I'll give you a reason for asking the question. Is there a connection between, we'd say, the Freemasons and their lodges in here in Sligo's area, in the south of Ireland, anywhere, and the Orange Lodge in, in Northern Ireland? No. No. They're then met with the opposed organisations. When, when we'd say I'm a child of the 40s, the late 40s, and grew up in the 50s, like to think I became a man in the 60s. And when we were younger and we didn't really, you didn't really know, somebody said, what's that building here? And so the other man said, well, that's where all the orange men hang out. Uh -huh. right? yeah. this, this, this is a fact, I mean. Yeah. 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 Well, that's the thing about But there was this concept. And, and, totally, yeah. And, and, I, I asked my dad then, he said, oh, not at all. I was into that this 50 years ago well, or 40 years ago. And originally from Belfast. Yeah. And originally from Belfast. You never know. Would you not? I have not lost the act. I have lost the act. Thank Christ. Um, and, in, and from East Belfast. So the part of the shipyard and the airport. So it would be what would be called the loyal story. Now I have been living at Sligo 20 plus years with the Southern Catholic. So. Yeah, it's the yeah. So what I'm going to say to you is I can see both sides. What you're saying. But what I'm going to say to you is the Orange Lodge, I have family that's members of the Orange Lodge. Yeah. And the principle of the Orange Order is that you maintain a reformed faith. You cannot socialise with anybody outside the reformed faith. Mm -hmm. You cannot go into the chapel. You cannot marry somebody from anything but the reformed faith. Right? So Freemason, so that's the Orange Order. Right? Freemasonry is a totally secular society. You, the only thing that we, there's three things that we ask, that you're over 21, obviously your name, but we'll, we'll cover that. Uh, your food report, I, you're not paid at all, and you believe in the Supreme Being. Who, what that Supreme Being is, it could be a Christian God, it could be Allah, it could be Jehovah, it could be Buddha, it could be Ganesh. Ooh. As long as you believe in the Supreme, Supreme Being, being. Yeah. Yeah. that's it. Yeah. So as a secular society, we take anybody. In fact, there's a lodge that sits in Dublin, and when we go upstairs, you see that there's a Bible, there's a Quran, and there's a Torah. That's it. So all three mm. faiths sit. Uh, can you be. Uh, in the Orange Order? No, themselves? can you be dismissed as a member oh, for yeah. if you. Oh, there, there's a hundred one reasons why you could be dismissed. You know, but, you know, a bit of politics, a bit of money, you know, and having a serious crime or doing something. But to go back to the Orange Order, I personally have a problem with it because, and I've had this discussion with family members going who are in the Masonic or in the Orange Order. How can you say that I'm choosing out in the Orange Order with all members of the Reformed Faith? And then on a Thursday night, the Dunyard Masonic and there's Catholic. Or there's Jews or there's whatever. I said, you can't. That's, that's it's, 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 it's the same business place. I do a lot of business with. Uh, people that are in the Orange Order and they don't have any problem dealing with me and they're some of the best people you could deal with I have no problem with them but they never seem to use religion against you or where you come from they don't once you're doing business with them it's satisfactory just the way it should be yeah, yeah. They're, they're business is business business is business and you're not going to get anybody with anything that's going to turn down the chat that's the honest yeah. you know what I mean so but if you came to the nitty gritty the true colour of the mind. And you might see the nitty gritty happen because of Brexit. Mm -hmm. You know, so. Um, but as I say. I find those, well, even just, you know, maybe I'm coming at it from a different perspective, but as a worker in the area of community development, it's been very interesting for me because to try and get across community groups to come together has been quite difficult in a small town like Sligo. And, you know, sometimes, like, I'm beginning to question, why is that? Why are we so secular? Why are we so Insurance. entrenched in the way we are? When there's no need to be. Like, we, like... I think there's another hole that you see there. I know, but yeah. I'm just saying, you'd imagine, you know, like this gentleman was saying, with all that activity and business and people talking and having that kind of conversation, that it would break down other barriers. But now... 
I'm just really kind of, I suppose, looking at it's not. Well, this order here, my lodge would be 60-40 Catholic cross. Now, in saying that, there is a rule in the Masonic Order that we cannot talk about politics or religion. And even we all meet, like we would all meet out once, once a while for a for change and for a couple of beers or meet up for lunch and meet some. Even then, when we socialise, if somebody starts talking about politics or Brexit or something like that, and somebody shouts roof out of three, good chance it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. There is only one time that you were asked what religion you may pertain to. That is when you were in your application, so that your holy book can be here. But we'll talk about that's the only reason. Yeah, and that's the only reason. Once and once only. When you jump. So that we can <coughs> respect your yeah. beliefs. And that's it. And the only reason why we know what people are is because we go to funerals and weddings and christenings and things like that. And that's the only thing. You know what I mean? Like, we all are of mixed religion here, and we all get on great. <laughs> like, <laughs> you know what I mean? <laughs> you know, 99% of the time, we all get on great. Religion is not like what it was years ago, it's gone. No, in saying that, there's still. It's not much. No, there's. It's not religion, it's that quasi religion where if you're a Catholic, you're a Republican, if you're a Protestant, you're a Yes, that's. You're a kid if you didn't go to Mass. But that's what it is, it's a quasi religion, I think. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, but what, what Marcella said there, I can understand that. Where you have different, let's say, groups yeah. or communities, and. Uh, to pr preserve themselves, they're inclined to keep in their smaller groups. In, 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 well, in, in I, circles of wagons. You know what I mean? Above yeah. in, yeah. And, and I'm only telling the story, I had an uncle above in Derry who was uh, my father's sister, married, married. outside Derry. And through marriage, and he was a counsellor, he was an orange master, whatever you call it. And I can remember him telling me, that, you know, at the start of the Troubles, that part of the trouble was, as you know, you had the bog side there, that the Catholic bishops wouldn't allow anything being built, school or anything, outside the bog side area. So you ended up that all of us. Yeah. Yeah. And the same thing, it, it's, it's not happening, but there really? is that little mentality. I've, that always we all said, I've always said for in the North that the solution to the North isn't through politics. And the solution to the North is that they take the Catholic Church and the Protestant Church out of the and let the state. The Northern Ireland Assembly run the schools. You take all religion out of the school. And you cannot if you want to if you want to send your child to a so called Protestant school or a Catholic school, you pay for it. Mm -hmm. And uh, the state runs schools in the North should be free and should be run the North. Mm -hmm. but in that's the, that's the only way you're going to get it sorry. In the Northwest there really is. there is a different type of mentality than there is in say the northeast, well, in the east of the country, where you go into Mead and 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 now and then around there, people here are not just as progressive for some reason or another, and they seem to they seem to corner their own or their own little piece, the cut of their own corner more mm. than they do over there. And I, I you see this work by is that the, is that like, sort of like a subconscious legacy of the family? I think you know where yes. you get sort of. You have that sort of because there's two things that the what I've seen down here, there's two things that the Southern Ireland, especially Western Ireland, will fight over and will annihilate each other over as on um, the money. Oh, yeah. 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 Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. 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 And that's a legacy from yeah. I think the famine well, and you, the sort you, of the and the it, you know, it and, is, but you, you have this other thing where there is a sort of a thing where it's difficult to get 
Now, Marcella would know from being involved in, in, in local government and stuff, to get something across the, the line in the sense of <coughs> some particular thing that's good for the area. In Tully Gold, say up in, in, in Dasher Kenny around there, you had the likes of Neil Blady, you had Paddy Hart, all these. They had their own viewpoints and they were very uh, vociferous on them. But when it came to getting something for their own area, they did pull one another, and they made every effort to yeah, get. Yeah, but you know where that was. They wanted in the next year to get their pension. Yeah. That's all it was. It was. They was doing. They weren't doing it for the for the people. They were doing it for the people, so that they would get the votes. Stay in the cushion number the dog. I wish the two was here. But the thing is, they were. But like you know, at the end of the day, they have the results. They take off. I agree. They want I agree. And I suppose when you bring it back to Sligo, then. You know, and I'm just sitting here and I'm just thinking, like when I was when I was going to school, and um, I remember being sent up to the model school when I was about 11 from the mercy of the message. And I remember having, there was a, a gabardine, of, it was a wool coat though, and it was absolutely pitting rain. Now, you wouldn't be sent now because you could throw out the school if the teacher did that. I was sent from the mercy, and I came up to the model. Next door. And I was next door, and I walked up the steps and knocked on the door, and I remember this one wrote on the door, and she said to me, Come in, stand on the mat, don't wet the floor. I don't even put it for it in the morning. I don't even come back here again, do you know what I mean? So I came in. And I was got, the, the, it was either Mrs. Lusco or gave, Mrs. Higgins, yeah, some of the two. I gave the note anyways and, and I waited until I was terrified. And anyways, I came home and I said to my mother, I thought my mother, what, so what you happened? And she said, and she probably said, oh, that was that how I won, whatever. But no, 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 no. And, um, and so my association then, maybe because of that, and then, you know, I've listened to Dr. Fiona Gallagher as well, and we'll be talking, maybe she'll come to give us a talk as well, about the whole thing around the cholera, right? But the association for me as a child growing up was the mall was the place of wealth. So you had the doctor on the mall, you had um, the, the school, you had the model, you yeah. had the grammar school, you had here we call the cycle house. Do you know what I mean? That's what we called it. And, and but then there was always that association with money. But yet, my mother came from the hill, and that was where the working class community worked in the docks, right? And worked in, and up in Market Street where I come from, up where I live in on St. Bridges. But yet there was such poverty over there, and there always seemed to be such wealth over here. And I do think in Sligo that there is an association with wealth. On this map, on this, this and, on this and street, because this building is here, there's there is a natural association. Well, no, like, and because as well, it was gated, yeah. so it was seen to be privileged. Yeah. You need well, to be quite honest, like to give you an idea, Lords Twenty were a wealthy land, sorry, business owners and things. So they'd be the wealthy, and one six five was started because an awful lot of tradesmen and normal people who wanted to join in some order. So Twenty says, oh, they, I don't know if this is right, I'm saying this right, it's not supposed to be bad in there, but they're going, oh right, we started another lodge. So they started 165. And to this day, 165 is, is, is the biggest lodge in the district because we don't have any restrictions on um, religion, obviously, age, wealth, whatever. If you're what job you have or where you come from? Demographic. If you fit in with us, we're. So it doesn't matter if you're a care worker, to well, we're a doctor. Yeah, no. We have a care worker. We have a couple of care workers. Mm -hmm. I just saying that, that's, that's what you're talking about, so it's right across There's the board. There's a couple of guys, there's a couple of unemployed. You know what I mean? Yeah, so it's course, yeah. so it, it, if you accept us, we'll accept you. you know, if you want to come in and better yourself through the moral code that we, we sort of train, sort of thing, and the charitable work that we do, yeah, you know, by all means, you know. But, but just <clears throat> on, a, on a point not relevant at all, but you mentioned earlier on about the building in Arthur Jackson was sort of the yeah. man who got this built. And KP Murray bought his house on the Strand to the road as when it went under the bridge and yeah, yeah, destroyed yeah. or whatever it's called. But he told me that when he bought that house, Arthur Jackson moved to Belfast. That would be probably the son of the man, I'd say, who started. He, he moved to Belfast anyway, 
and a lot of the old records, it was obvious that the meetings were held there. And when you said uh, the, wife. the wife got to think, and some of the, the, the real historic stuff was still left there when Arthur Jackson moved. Sure because be. KP Murray told me that he actually saw it. It shouldn't have been. It should have been sent to Dublin. It should have been sent to Dublin. Yeah, it was, oh, K- really? you know, KP told me that he, he saw this and this was a, I went through the house with him. He gave me a tour. The house was actually looking Murray's house. It looks. Yeah, it's 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 that's what we're saying. We don't know if Arthur Jackson got a two for one day or whatever. But no, no, it's actually, it's one of, one of, I don't know if it was his family or whether it was a grandchild. One of the Jacksons were in Sligo in the last six months. Came to visit Sligo. I wonder if they had stuff that was still in that house. That'd be the that'd be year. Well, that's not our daughter. I wouldn't think so. The current owner. Martin Hawkins is correct, Jay, has it on there. Tell Aston. Interesting, wouldn't it? I can ask one of the people. No, I asked him about, I asked, actually asked Martin, were there any of the old records uh, relating to... Anthony Murray didn't want to ask him. I won't comment. I won't comment. But but I did mention it to Martin Hawkins a few months ago, or a year maybe when he bought the house, sometime after he bought the house. And uh, I spoke about been through the house with KP Murray and um, he showed me he did this boiler for waste timber for heating the house and that. And um, he uh, went through the history of the house from when he bought it, I think in the mid 1960s, I think about 1965. He bought it or 66, but he told me a lot of the older sort of historic records of the lodge were left there when he, when he, when he uh, bought it and took it over. Well, that, well, that our sister knows you know about <laughs> Well, one of the things you were saying about one of the three things, I mean, we were saying about Charlie and Brother and all this. To give you an idea, we <coughs> are predominantly a charitable organization. The Masonic Order is only second in the National Lottery in both Ireland and Britain. And what they give each other. Uh, in the States, there's two million dollars per day with the charity. Back and where does time. the money come from? Us. Like you, as like members. Oh, our pockets. Uh, in every meeting, there's a charitable collection. Okay. Um, and you, you can put in what you can afford. If it's a 50 cent. No, because it's we have a little pouch. You put it in, so nobody knows what you can put in. So if you only put in 50 cents, and if you wait 50 euros. Mm. You know, so that's every meeting. But every lodge, yeah, there's 780 odd lodges in, in Ireland, both north and south. It's a 32 country organization. So, but also, one of the things where they get the money is that <coughs> the back in the 1700s, the Masonic Order were the first organization to get free education. And do you know Pooley's Hotel in Balls Bridge? Mm-hmm. No, it's not even Clayton. Clayton? Yeah. Clayton. Yeah. That's the old school for ours. So when you can walk in, there's a tile thing, mm-hmm. and swear comes in the floor, and then above the door is a single song. There's sort of six points song. So that was the first school. That started in the 1770s and went on to the 1950s. They sold that. But there's also a boys' school, Up and Come Scheme, which is now part of DCU's architecture department. And that finished the game in the 50s or early 60s when allegedly free education came in the Ireland. Mm. Um, so they sold that, they invested in property. So half of those were straight in Dublin is owned by the Grand Lodge of Ireland. Who the Kilkenny shop? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Massa, right? yeah, yeah. Ooh, that whole building belongs to us. And the Satan car park behind it. And, and did they pay rent on that? Yeah. So that building belongs to the Sonic Order. And that money goes back into the Order? Into the, the charities. You also do fundraising time. We also do fundraising night. Like, but we'll, we'll, we'll come to that in a second. Money, so the money doesn't go into the Sonic Order. The money goes into the Sonic Charities. charities. Oh, right. And all okay. of the money, all of the interest in anything that, that is uh, accrued on any of the charities has to be spent annually. It can't be kept in. So it has to be, yes. It can't be, it can't be broke. You know, kept up. Yeah. Uh, 
It's the first every year. Every year. Yeah. One of the one of the charities that we do, <coughs> there's a thing, it's a thing called TLC. And what it is, it's tennis for love and car. And what it is, is when a child goes into A and E or goes into hospital or whatever. Well man, he goes into A and E or whatever, we're all stressed. But a child is special. So when you see a guy coming at you with a big needle, you're a child. So they give so they decided to do these bars. So these bars are hermetically safe. So when the child comes in and gives the child a bar, sort of relaxes it, the doctor goes over and says, Look, give him the bar, they inject him. It does hurt. So we have given out nearly three hundred thousand over the past five years. Now this is all over north and south, and we give them like free hostiles. So we part of the charity is like that, and so it, it relaxes the child, but it also relaxes the child <laughs> so that the medical staff can assess the child a bit more efficiently. And that's the first time I ever I've never heard of that. that. And I've never seen but see, it but this is what I was saying to you the other day. We we don't publicise a lot of the charity work that we is do. That, is but that, because we don't do it yourself, brother. Is it part of the ethos not to do that, not to make it the first? And that's a problem that some of us have. If you know, we've got it tonight in a way. Yes. One of the other things that we do that people don't realise is we actually run the Young Musician of the Year competition. Do you? Do you know what? The Young Musician of the Year competition is run in October every year in Ten mode years. in in Moses Street. Mm. It's run in conjunction with Lyric FM. Eamon Lawler was the presenter. He uh, retired this year after 10 years. Um, we put up 25,000 euro to run the competition. We bring in international juries from all over Europe. Uh, the six music colleges in the, in the country put candidates up for, for the competition. Mm. And it is a fantastic Mm. It's brought the final broadcast live. You know. Last year it was won by a wee girl called Amy Gillen from uh, Ballantrap. She's fantastic. Flautist. Flautist. Yeah. She uh, is based in London now. And what did Masai were give her a bursary for a year? Yeah, but what she what she gets out of winning the competition is she gets five thousand euro. Or the winner gets five thousand euro. They also get uh, a gig with the National Concert Orchestra in. Right. National Concert Hall, which is a huge prize. Right. That is worth more to them than the actual money. There's a couple of other prizes that they get, but we also negotiate with a company in London, and the highest placed string player gets a violin or a, whatever string it's going to get worth the value of quarter of a million pounds sterling for a year Jesus. as a prize. You get to use it for a year. You get to use it for a year. You wouldn't do it. People don't actually realise that it will be broadcast sometime in the new year uh, on Lyric FM if you're going to stick around. Hopefully, hopefully it will be. But, but as it, and, and the Grandmaster um, at the competition this year announced that it will be continued to run. So we're going to continue to run it. But the other thing is just on that, the other charities, we actually give a lot of medical research. <coughs> so we give, we put funded into prostate cancer, Alzheimer's, Parkinson's, uh, what other ones? There's 19 of them. There's 19 medical research. I think the first that I know, I never realized that Dr. George ended his funeral. And at his funeral, it was the first time I heard of all the charitable work that he was the Sonic Order. Oh, yeah. Yes. Uh, and Sorry, I was George, I was, was George, you'll see it. George Kelly uh, was the provincial uh, grandmaster in this district. So ten, 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 ten years ago. Yeah. But it it was the I never realized or knew that uh, you know there was so much charitable work done. <laughs> Uh, yeah, it's even in the States, they only we got three hospitals. It came, same, same it came uh, across. In the States, the only three hospitals. No, my no, brother-in-law yeah. does a lot of work, but he uh, he doesn't tell me. <laughs> but uh, it. Uh, well, to give you an idea, another one the, in the States, the only three hospitals that you can rock up to are run by in some part. 
the Shrine. So, how do you know that they're? How do you know that they're? Because it's a big deal. The Shriner Hospital. That's what they're called. Shriner. Shriner. Yeah, there's these guys. You see them in all these like Fourth of July parades and these big stupid faces and these red carts. You know, and they all act in Egypt. It's all about a farm. But they actually run something like 32 hospitals across the states. Free. You rock up and go home. Whatever. You know. A lot of them are sort of child, child pediatric hospitals and things like that. But you sell the women, you sell the men, you know, so there's enough of charity work that we do. You know, that people don't like. Right. There's a thing, there's a campaign on now which is called Vision 2020. And it's the Grandmaster Dirk Doogie Doogie Gray. Um, it's his sort of vision, it's his sort of big thing. And there's three charities that we're supporting. There's RNLI, Medicine Sans Frontier, and the Sand Community, both north and south. So the aim is, is to build a lifeboat station in the north and a lifeboat station in the Republic. We'll give money to Medicine Sans Frontier to do the work worldwide and uh, give money to the Sand Community in the north and the Sand Community in the south. So I uh, <coughs> believe that's well. So. Or the one, so it's a mock guard, the one in no, the Republic. No, it's not. It's, uh, it's, it's not great. Not great. So it's a natural lifeboat. And the other one's in It's an upper mock guard. It's kind of odd, really, because I'm going to put the cat on the patient's hair, but you know what I mean? Go on, oh, so. so. Like, on the one hand, you know, I was not aware of all that work. I know the conversation of Chalaski for Church, yeah. but now that's obviously a conversation that's been widely seen. Yeah. So now I'm more aware of the fact of what you do. But I'm also aware of the fact that you don't look for credit or for congratulations or whatever you want to call it about that work. But yet you're also aware that people will crit will critique you and criticize you and you know But that's but what, their what you know, I, 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 I know, I know, I know, I know, I know, I know. So why would you do that? Why would you accept that? Masonic order. No, no, but why would you accept the fact that you know in your head yeah. that you're doing all this work and you know on this side that people are criticising you for being this undercover secret service, blah, blah, blah. New word, new word order and all that. So why would you not take away that cloak and dagger stuff and say, well, actually, this is what but, we're but this is what we're trying to do with nights like this and okay. Culture Night and uh, Heritage Night and these things. This is what we're trying to do. Yeah, because it's news to me that you're doing all that yeah. mm, charity work. Yeah. So see when I come to you when we're having a thing yeah. and I say, Mary, I want money of you because you set up in that hall and that's great charity work. And see if you say no, I'm going to cut you to bits. I have no idea. Yes, no. Up to uh, a number of years ago. Being free. Uh, Being free is right. Sorry. As a policy did not um, reply, reply, to, reply to criticism at all. That, came, that was In policy. Press and that, that, that was policy yeah. that came from the Grand Lodge of Ireland. Uh, that changed. Eric Waller became Grand Master. Twenty years ago. About twenty years. years. About twenty years ago. Uh, in his, uh, when he was made the Grand Master as his relation, in his speech, he basically said that Masons need to be part of, the, of society, not apart from, from society. Right. And from that moment on, the Grand Secretary started answering questions. Oh, and all the lodges were totally within the rules. Yes. And has that generated more interest? I mean, has it we we would get. Two, three members nearly every year. You run <coughs> here uh, seven, eight seven, eight years ago to an open night and uh, yeah. sat, down, sat down and talked to me and um, Nicholas. Ni yeah. Nicholas. Maybe I was Nicholas wrong. Still Wilkinson <laughs> and will this over all sorts of things. The next thing we got an application form. We haven't yet given it. <laughs> but uh, no. People join, they come in, they talk to us, they find out what we're and they actually join. A lot of people have joined. We would get early culture night or early, we would get two applications, one or two applications. But we get, this year we have, on our night, we've already had, we'll have two ballots to do at our next meeting yeah. for two new candidates. <coughs> then there's another one likely to happen in the new year. So there'll be two or three in the year. You know what I mean? So we're constantly growing. 
Yeah, and that's a good thing, and, and again, the age thing. You're after saying you have a culture night, and do you advertise that? No, cul yeah. no I cult, 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 that's a part of culture night. Culture right. right. But the thing we do advertise it, but it's sold out like that. Oh, yeah. We try to get tickets for it. It's a hottest ticket in town because I give it. So we have a pride of you and Mary. We are very privileged. So we're very privileged. Yeah. 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 Well, we'll go upstairs. Yes. We'll go up in the lodge room. Are we safe to go to upstairs? On Marcel. Yeah, no, that's it's it's voice, it's what it's white, it's it's white yeah. Right, is that everybody? Yeah. Right. We'll go in. Yeah. 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 No. This is the room. This is the room. This is where we meet. This is the meeting. Oh, this is the meeting. You have the meeting up here, yep. and you go down and have uh, chicken and bones, and, 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 and you see all the other professionals. We do. We're not normally here. You used to have them. Yeah. 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 No, this is the surprise. You, you have to earn your stripes down stars and the cold and miserable. And that's what I'm saying then. Look at there, you sit in that seat, Oh, here. Wait, see, she's going to fall asleep. I sit and you know something that's lovely and warm in here. Yeah, the fire. And then we have it's very ornate, isn't it? I'm very, I'm very surprised. But this is what we're saying about downstairs is very stark. Yeah. And then you come up here and it's all. Look at the eyes. Look at the eyes. What's this fella here? I will come to that. Just want to take a seat, Mo. I'll take you to one of the best places to sit. That's the founders of 165. Mm -hmm. But but do you recognize what, what's on the jewel?
that's something. First of all, I have to apologize for the smell of the the fire didn't like and that's never smoking. So it's it's very it's very reminiscent of old the old Sligo uh, smell. So this is the lodge room. This is in some Masonic things and constitutions, this is called a temple. It's not a temple. It's just an overly decorated room. Nice carpet. That's all it is. That's the carpet's new. The carpet only came in the summer. And it was a private donation by one of the members. So it needs it needs hoovered nearly every after every visit. So, yeah, so, yeah. so it's it's the newness of the What's bulbs. What's the significance of the? We'll get there. Yeah. You're, you're <laughs> your mind's ahead of everybody else. Just when you're not getting relaxed. <laughs> Jesus, man, you you did and you just sniff something before you came up. Didn't you? <laughs> the rate, the rate he takes <laughs> stuff in. <laughs> <coughs> this room. So when we go back, the whole thing about the Masonic Order, it's. The three stories that we tell in the degrees is about the building of this temple of Solomon from the Bible. This room is laid out as per the temple of Solomon. And the stories that we tell through the three degrees of masonry is a story about the architect Hiram Abiff. So you hear a guy called Hiram Abiff, who was the architect to King Solomon who built this temple. The only part of the temple that still exists today is the Wheel of Wall in Jerusalem. That's where you know, the Jews yeah, stand yeah. and they pray yeah. and stick the prayers in the cracks. Yeah. That's allegedly the only part of the temple that still exists. So, everything in Freemasonry, there's a meaning or there's, it's an allegory, meaning that there's a story behind it, there's a meaning behind it. The carpet has a meaning behind it. Does anybody want to have a crack at what the meaning behind the carpet is? Drafts. <laughs> it's yeah. drafty, but it's... <laughs> yeah. Because there's a shape, that, you know, the, the symbol, the diamonds. Square and compass. The diamond. The diamond. Yeah. No. Colors? You're getting that. What? Oh, there the we're going. Corners, <laughs> the, the symbols in the corners. Yeah, well, well, to, then it's not the symbols and the colors. Black it's and white. <laughs> black and white. Black and white. What's black and white mean? Left or right. Left or right. Left or right. The difference in the Good or evil. Good or yeah. Yeah. Right. Right. So when you walk into a lodge room, you're always facing east. Right? So that's the east. And this, when you actually go out of the building, you'll see that the lodge, or the building, is actually not sitting parallel to the street. It's slightly off a bit. So this room is perfectly aligned east, west, north, south. Right. So when you come in, you're always facing east. So what happens in the east every day? Right. So you get illumination, and illumination is the illumination of knowledge in Freemason and Masonic terms. Mm -hmm. So you get the illumin, you know, open mindedness and receive the, light. receive the light. So as you come in, you walk to the to the east. You walk over good and evil darkness and light so that means it's, so that symbolizes your journey through life that you'd always come across good and evil as you progress to the light of illumination so this is where we're going to get into all the symbolic stuff and all the the weird illuminati-esque stuff the two pillars yeah what's different about them Look carefully. There's this, it's very subtle. Yeah. Don't be saying one's left and one's right. <laughs> Look at the top. Ball yeah, there's different. two globes. Yeah. Ball is different. yeah. So in this one, we have a terrestrial globe. Yeah. And in this one, we have a celestial globe. So that's, so when you, what that signifies is the terrestrial is the body of man. And the celestial is the spirit of man. So you have to have both to become a person. So one is called, one pillar, this pillar is called Boaz. And that pillar is called Yachin. Right? These are words took from the Bible. And that's a Hebrew saying that then God, in God's strength we believe. So that the two pillars. And as a man with the two globes, as a human, 
in God's strength you believe. That, that uh, is for every religion. But we'll come to that in a minute. This is over. Everybody's God. It's not a Christian God. It's just because back in the day when Freemasonry was being developed in the 1700s, it started on these islands. Some said it started in Ireland, some said it started in Scotland. It didn't start in England, but the English like to think that it did. But we know it didn't. And they hate it when you tell them that. And you hate it when they tell them that they lost the World Cup in Rome. So, okay. <laughs> <laughs> um, so to give you an idea, uh, so when the Freemason was started, it was all a very Christian or orientation. So everything was took from the Christian Bible. But now as we develop, we've become a secular organization, so we accept all religions. So as a secular organization, we don't call that book a Bible. We call that the volume of the sacred law. Because as a Hindu, a Buddhist, or whatever, if we had their book, their holy book there, it would be called a volume of the sacred law. So everybody recognizes their book as a volume of the sacred law. So it's a sort of umbrella set. Mm -hmm. Also for God, we don't call God, God. Because Jews call him Jehovah, Muslims call him Allah. Mm -hmm. Jeho you know, Hindu Buddhists, Hindu Buddha, Hindus, Ganesh, Brahma and all that. So we use a saying called the great architect of the universe. Because every religion believes that their God built the universe. So again, it's a cover all. So nobody's offended. So when we open our thing, there's a prayer, and we ask for the, the help of the great architect of the universe to guide us through our work. The higher power. Nobody gets offended. So this is what we're saying about the secular organization. So, as I said, the layout of the room, it's like a, the curtains are for another order, which is another Masonic order, it's called the Royal Arts Chapter. And these represent the curtains that were in the tabernacle. The tabernacle was the first place that the Ark of the Covenant was, and it was split. So as you, the plebs, I'd be out here, and all the high priests and all would be up, were Moore and Mary and the elite are, you know, so. <laughs> and they just look the you know, part, don't Typical they? sexton, you know, setting up our thing, lowering lower it over everybody. <laughs> So as you so as you go through that ceremony, that degree, you're given a word at each curtain and the curtain opens and you progress until you get to the Holies of Holies, which is tonight Mary Kelpie. Yeah. Oh, the I Holy of Holies. I never thought I'd say that about you, Mary. So so everything in masonry is done in threes. So we have the three degrees of craft masonry. So you have the first degree, the second degree, and the third degree. The third degree is pretty intense. It takes about an hour and 20 minutes to go through. And that's where we get the saying, no, if you're out, you have a couple of, and you're a couple of lemonades more than you should, and you come back a couple of hours more that, later than you should, and you, you say, fuck, I got the third degree last night. <laughs> that's where it comes from. <laughs> and that is where it comes from. The other sayings that come from Freemasonry is, because we use a square and a compass. Square. No. Yeah, because I don't. No. Oh, I know where there's a square and a compass. Mark a page. So, so those sayings when we're saying about it, square, but down here so everybody can see. <coughs> So, our, you see the symbol everywhere, square and compass, it's on the door, it's above the door, it's on the gate, it's on my ring, it's, we wear pins. So the square is a perfect angle. It's equal in every way. So, it's 90 degrees. Yeah? So if it was 100 degrees, it'd be obtuse. If it was 80 degrees, it'd be acute. So it wouldn't be equal. So that's where you get the same fair and square, to treat everybody equal. You get a square D. That's where it is. All that comes from the three cases. Yeah. The sense became common vernacular. You know, it's the same as uh, others' hands. You know, there's, I like, there's another one that we use, another 
similar behaviour to the level. And it, in Freemasonry, you, you, the story behind the level is you treat everybody the same, so on the same level. Mm -hmm. And somebody says, are you on the level? Are you telling me that? Or, you know, so are you telling me the truth? Are you? Yeah. So that comes in as well. So the compasses. <coughs> this is where we get into all the symbolism and, and allegory. The compasses represents, one leg represents the Freemason. This one, or that one, whatever. So the compass inscribes a circle. Yeah? So the centre of that circle is the Freemason. And the circle that he inscribes is the word that he lives in. So if you look at the symbols, the square and compass sits like that. Right? So that symbol says that you have to treat everybody within your word very square. So you have to treat everybody on the square. So that's what it is. So that's what that means. <coughs> Um, anything else? Well, we're talking about talking about earlier about the morals that we teach and things like that. And again, going back to the stonemasons, <coughs> you say you come into Freemasonry as a rough stone, right? And as we said with the square and compass, there's other tools that we use, like, and they're called the working tools. And every tool has a story behind it, sort of like a like a moral lesson. And as you use those moral lessons through your life, so the tools that you use, you become a perfect stone, or a good, you know, a good stone. So we see the building as society. So you know, so you build society. So if you had a, a hole in a building and you put a really rough stone in, what would it do? It wouldn't add anything to society. It would fall out and probably hinder society or hinder that building or that society. So that's no good. So if you work your moral lessons, you put a perfect stone in it fits. It strengthens the wall, so it strengthens society. So that's that's the moral lessons that is taught through Freemasonry. Yeah. So that's what we have. That's why you have the square and compass, and you have all these other things. So, right, we get to the dress the other part. First degree, we wear aprons. Masonic apron, you've heard about this. goes back to the stonemasons where you had to, where you had to wear an apron. So you get a white one, which means you're pure and you're perfect and you're innocent. Huh. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah. You ever get a chance to wear it? Mary, twenty yards away. At the meet, at the meet, everybody has to work. You're not allowed through that door unless you have it on. Yes. No, you'd be told to get out if you didn't have it on. So. Yeah. They're all wearing. They're all wearing. These are photographs I've taken after meetings. Or yes. This is Charlie Roark. Charlie has been dead now for twenty years. It's another thing in Freemasonry, we're not going to run the But so as you progress, you get a second degree. And there's two, two rosettes to represent the two things. So in your third degree, you get this. This is, this is the bling. This is your master. What do you do with that What do you do? You wore it. And it distinguishes your rank. So that's what I'm saying, you get through three degrees. So when you come into the order, you get the pure white one. What you put in it? <laughs> <laughs> well, it symbolizes. All right, okay. He didn't say that. He, he did. Didn't you were asleep. You just. Yeah, he puts his money in it. <laughs> yeah, that's why we're all rich. That's where we're ahead of our money. <laughs> actually, there is some, and there's some you actually do get a pouch, but it's for your ritual book. But that's not here. In candy music, there's an Irish reading really called the Mason Zephyr. That's exactly what it is. No, that's that's what it is. Yeah, I yeah. never knew that, but yeah. I, I, I couldn't find it. Because, so here's the thing for you. This, there's two triangles 
on this apron. Right? Where are they? This one. Right, where's the other one? There's two triangles on this. Right. Where's the two triangles? Well, the one inside, is it? There's one there, right? We'll say that. That's that's one. Yeah. The other one's hiding in plain sight. Why you trying to the white one, no. Yeah. no, 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 that's one. That's one. That's one. Yeah. Turn it sideways, something or turn it, or. Oh, there we go. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Angle it differently? No, it's there. Turn upside down. But well, it's still Corner. be a triangle. <laughs> Corner. No. no. The tree was S. Oh, yeah. So it was hidden in plain sight, right? So a triangle, you see the tables are triangular? Yeah. yeah. A triangle is a sign of a deity, a god, Father, Son, Holy Ghost. So when you go to churches, especially in Europe, like I was just in Russia there in September, and in St. Petersburg, the church of the Lady of Kazan in St. Petersburg has a huge triangle over the door with a sunburst. So it's a deity. So when the triangle's pointing up, it means man ascending into God. When the triangle's pointing down, God descending in the man. So when you have two triangles intertwined, it's a famous symbol that's used today on a flag. Where is it? Which was? There's two triangles, there's two intertwined triangles on a flag somewhere in the world. On a flag in the world. Israel. Right. But that's called the Star of David. Yeah? Because that's one triangle over. over the rest. But if you have two intertwined triangles, which means man and God become one, it's called the Seed of Solomon. So there's a slightly different. So that come from the way and all that? It comes from, yeah, it comes from Solomon. <clears throat> so, uh, to give you an idea of what Martin said about the Royal Arch Chapel, in Ireland we have five Masonic orders. So we've talked all night about this one, which is what we call the blue, which is this. Yeah. Then we have the Royal Arch Chapter, the Knights Council, the Knights Templar, and the Princes, which is the 33rd degree stuff, right? So that's what we have in Ireland. Dead simple. In, in England, That. So the things that I've highlighted are the ones that we have in Ireland. Mm -hmm. So the English, they just went, huh, we're going to have more than you. Mm -hmm. So, <laughs> and then in the States, have that one. Yeah, because everything bigger and better in the States. Yeah, it has to be, yeah. yeah. <laughs> you know, so, so, but as I say, we in Ireland, there's only one Masonic order that is purely Irish. And it's practiced all over the world, Australia, America, all over. And it's this one here. It's called the Knights Council. It's run all over the world from Dublin. And see the green frame between Mary and Mara? Yeah. That's the council that sits here. So you'll see the symbols in the corner. So the square and compass represents what we were talking about all night. This one over here, which is the Sea of Solomon. Represents the Royal Arts chapter, and the one down here, it's green, the two swords, is the council. So that's the pu only pure Irish one that's anywhere in the world. And there's actually a meeting of the council here tomorrow night. <coughs> so, any questions? Where did you learn all that? That's just a pretty fierce I'm in the Lodge of Research, which is a national lodge. So it's some. I'm a member this this here eight years. I'm a member of the Lodge of Research four. Now, where we are, how the lodge works, that's what we have to talk about. Is that where the original democracy stroke equal rights thing because 
everybody in the lodge is equal, except for one person, and that's where Mary sits. And that's the master of the lodge. It had to be you. But they only sit there one year, and then they're bucked out. Then they're back in the plebs, they're back in the cheap seats. <coughs> and then what about the other three chairs? Right, but this is what I'm going to come to. So as you progress through the lodge, uh, oh, I didn't. No. The other one is ours. What yeah, but the other one shouldn't be there. I know. But hey, okay. this is this is uh, past masters register of lodge one six five, oh. going back to uh, eighteen ninety five. When the lodge was formed. When the lodge oh, was formed. Lodge here, yeah. This yeah. lodge one six five was formed. Now, every single name on this, there's a couple of missing because they haven't been put on yet. Out of all the 120, 124 years, because we're 125 years next year. next year, there are only six names appearing on this twice in 124 years. Other lodges would have. Some, some, some lodges, lodges have. What are the surnames of people who I can't see it? <laughs> Have a look at it after. I will give you the glasses. So, as you progress through the lodge, Mark, hold on. You have offices, right? So, you progress through the lodge. So, the first office is here in this chair, it's in the inner garden. That's the most comfiest seat in the house because it's in front of the fire or heat. So in the winter night, I guess, everyone will go that. So from there you go to this chair, which is... What are these chairs for? Well, come down, because there's a sequence. Yes. So you go from here, in regard, just do that for a year, and then you go into what's called a junior deacon. So he carry, he's carrying messages for this guy around the lodge. Right? Let me... I just, I'm on a roll here, so don't... <laughs> and I'll answer all your questions in a minute. And then where Mark's sitting is a senior deacon, so he carries messages from the worshipful masters throughout the lodge, so distribute notifications or whatever. Then we have this office, which is called the junior ward. Then we have this office, which is senior ward. And then you do a year in each office, and then when you get to there, your next step is worshipful master. And you're only in their year, then you're back out, and then you're back into cheap seats. So, I'm, I'm in that chair for this year, until January. And then, yeah, that's I, then I'm into this chair next year, hopefully. Well, no, they've voted me in, so I will be in that chair next year. And then hopefully, if the Lodge wants me, I'll be in that chair in two years. And then... You're out the door. No, I'm back in the cheap seats. <laughs> it, it is ironic that we're in now where sort of anything goes for the last people. Is it still pretty formal? It's point? very formal because we have a, an opening and closing ceremony that we have to do. And I think that's one of the great things that young ones like. It's like, they like the formality of it because we have to wear suits, suit and tie. If you're not proper, properly dressed, you won't get in. So you sit, you do, and there's an opening and closing. And then it's just like any other society or club. Through the minutes of the last meeting, you organise charity collections, functions, whatever you have to do, talk about other business candidates. And then if you have a candidate to come in or go raise up through the levels, you have a degree. First degree takes about an hour, second degree takes about 25 minutes, and then the third degree takes about an hour and a half. They're all like one act plays. And you're actually given a book, which is the ritual book, which is this, which are the degrees. Ritual, I, I don't like the word ritual, it's more like a glorified play, one act play. And you, uh, the, the third degree is an hour and a half, and we in our lodge can do it without the book. So it's like learning a play. Like we had a third degree here at the last meeting, and it was, <clears throat> it was really, it's, it's really intense, and it's really good, and we've all been through it except for two guys in the lodge because they're first degree and second degree they'll be getting their third and it's a great thing you know that must be the origin of the scene where somebody <coughs> would get <coughs> caught in and yeah i got the third degree that's what we're saying earlier yeah that's what we're saying earlier yeah i got the third degree give it this you're asked questions and all that but we take our pride here in 
that we can do a ritual without the book. Now, I was at a lodge last night. I'm in another lodge out in Boyle. And there was one of their guys sitting reading out of the book. And you're going, do you know, really? You have to? Mm -hmm. No, it, it's a bit of pride. And we had different lodges of different... I took a young guy down to the lodge last night to visit Boyle. And I had always said to him, but every lodge has a different personality. And he only twigged it last night when he was in Boyle. It's hard to explain to you unless you go and you see it, but it's has a different vibe about it. And, do and is there an age limit on membership? No. Yes, it's there death. is. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Oh yeah, there's an age, there's a, yeah. yeah. There, there, is, a there is a rule that states that uh, you can join the Masonic Order at the age of 18 with dispensation from Grand Lodge to look after your aged and decrepit grandfather. Oh. Uh, but they don't allow it. Uh, they We're actually flat, quite... They flatly refuse point blank to give that dispensation because all of the very senior Masons in the country believe 18 years old is we're, we're actually quite lucky because we have a grandfather, a father and a son or grandfather, son, and grandson in the lodge. We also have a father and two sons, a father and son, and a guy at the last meeting nominated his father for membership. You're inside of them. Yeah. And brothers as well, yeah, sorry, yeah. So, no. Is there any questions while we're here? I'm just looking at this two X's. Or it's kiss kiss as we call it. Large <laughs> kiss. <laughs> Anything the, else? The organ or the harmonium? It's yes. a harmonium actually, yeah. Mm -hmm. And it works. yeah, yes. it works. <laughs> and you know, we do there's a bit of music when you walk in, there's a bit of music and things like that. Mm -hmm. And you know, when you see the things there's a know that we try and sing yeah. badly. Mm -hmm. You know. And again when you look at the words it's very Neutral. Mm. So it says about the God of the great God of the architect or the great architect of the universe and the great architect and all that. Anything else? You pray, you pray, you pray, you no, yeah, and, and and they open at the opening and closing of the of the lodge, there's a small there's a quick prayer. But that's to ask the great architect to help you through that meeting and believe me at times you need <laughs> you need that you need that help to get through some of the meetings. There's, 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 I, I have to hold my hand up and say, I have actually fell asleep during the meeting, and won't be one of those. Do you know they're that excited? Do you know what I mean? It's it's not all blood and gore and things like that. And how often do the members meet? We meet the third. My lodge meets the third Thursday of every month between September and April. And not during the summer then, during the summer. But we all meet up, and we all, like, Mark and I went up to a lodge. There's a call the Summer Lodge. It's up in Molesworth Street in July, and there's a... Well, just to explain, the Summer Lodge uh, is... So there, there are provincial grand lodges mm -hmm. in the country. Okay. Yeah. 14 provincial grand lodges. 14? 14 in Ireland. Soon to be 15. Uh, the... So, the... The Summer Lodge is held in, they have the, what it's called the uh, Metropolitan Board. There's no, Dublin doesn't have a Grand Lodge, it has a Metropolitan Board. So it meets in, in summer, in Summer Lodge, but the word is at the moment is that the uh, Metropolitan Board is being disbanded. Well, to give you an idea, and sorry, the just on that, just on the minute, we were, we went there this year, we were sat there, and the lodge was closed. We were all sitting through regalia, suits, aprons, the whole shebang. And the door was open, and this guard came in with a guy with a dog. And the lodge had given 15,000 to dogs for the disabled. Not dogs for the blank eye dogs, but dogs for the disabled. Mm -hmm. And they've actually sponsored two dogs. One's called Mason, one's called Tyler. Lovely. Funny enough. Um, so that's the other charity work that goes on, you know, that separate lodges would do yeah. that. The, the, the symbols on either side of the chair on the wall. G's the great, ar great architect of the universe. And is this a, a, 
sympathy. The one on the left is it the sun. Or it's the all for sale now. Oh, all for sale now. It's the same as what's in the picture. Oh, yeah. Yes. So what the all for sale now is. Again, it's a symbol for God because God will, is the omnipresent, yeah. all for saving being. And it's nothing to do with the Illuminati or any kind like that. Sorry, you can edit that out. <laughs> but that's, that's what it is. It's just an all for saving. Now, you'll see it on the dollar bill and the sale from Sonic and things like this, but it's God looking after him. When you see it above the pyramid on the dollar bill, there's 13 levels. Yeah. There's 13 levels on the dollar bill on that pyramid. Yes. And that's the 13 original columns. So that all for saying I over that was God overlooking the original 13 columns in the States. Anything else? Cup of tea. <laughs>